Nick's name is Jessica Marnier. She's a temp secretary. Car wash's owner knows her, says she comes in every week. But just to wash her car, right? Right. Miss Marnier didn't strike him as the kind of girl who did drugs. Appearances can be deceiving. Something tells me that the outside of the car is the only place that's clean. Before we get down to it, what's the status on your partner here? I heard Huntby talk to the sheriff. He did. And the sheriff talked to me about conducting a formal review of our DNA testing protocols. Which I did. Nothing was compromised. But I'm sure that won't satisfy the feds. They can satisfy themselves. We've got more pressing matters to deal with. Right now, let's leave the vehicle where it is. So that means we'll only have full access to the front seats. When we have the coroner pick up the body for autopsy and impound transport the car back to the garage at the lab, we'll be able to finish processing the rest of the car wash. That's the victim's roommate over there, her name's Veronica Carver. The owner of the car wash called her. All right. Well, I'll run our victim through the database, see if anything pops up. Let's get this done by the book, you two. Hello, Ms. Carver. We're from the Las Vegas Crime Lab. We just need to ask you a few questions. Okay, sure. I, I mean, of course. I'm just a little, you know, shaken. I see death all the time, but never like this. Never someone I was close to. You see death all the time? Oh, that sounds awful, doesn't it? I mean, I'm a registered nurse. I'm sorry if I sound a bit out of it. It's just that when the guy here at the car wash called me about Jesse, I, I'd just gotten off work in a double. He called me around 9 p.m., by the way, if that's important for you. Drugs? I really don't know. Maybe some pot occasionally. Pot. Never anything else. You know, Veronica, it'll really help if you tell us the whole truth. Okay. I've seen Jesse use cocaine a few times, but just recreationally. This is Vegas, right? Sometimes you do stuff you don't exactly write home about. Yeah, I knew about her little road trips. Jesse told me she liked to come here because she just loved the sound the brushes make as they clean your car. I guess they sound pretty damn good when you're stoned. I wouldn't know. Jesse seemed like she could handle it, you know? But all those drugs. Oh, who was I kidding? I should have done more to try to stop her. I should have tried to help her, but I only tried to mind my own business and pray she got better. Jessie's my roommate. What was my roommate? We live like ten blocks from here. Just Will. I mean, his name is Guillermo Rice, but everyone calls him Will. He's an old school friend of mine and he's Jessie's boyfriend. Oh God, how am I going to tell him about this? Thank you, Ms. Carver. You've been very helpful. Go get some sleep. We'll be in contact if we have any more questions. The surveillance camera is aimed at the car wash's entrance. If it's working, it must have caught our victim driving in. I'll check with the owner. We'll be able to process the brushes once we get the car moved to the garage. But let's make sure we've completely processed the initial scene first. If our victim OD'd, then that may be our murder weapon. This GPS unit is broken. I'll take it back to Archie and see if he can recover any data from it. Our 
victim might have gotten into convulsions and knocked the GPS out of its holder. That won't help you. We've got a usable print. Probably our victims. We better run it anyway. Definitely been used. I'll call down to the coroner's office to arrange for the body to be picked up. So the fingerprint on the GPS holder isn't Jessica Marinier's. It belongs to Manuel Molina's. And according to Mr. Molina's arrest record, he's no stranger to possession and distribution of narcotics. Right now he's on parole, so we have an address for him. I'll have Brass pay him a visit. I've completed the autopsy on Jessica Marnier. Come on down when you get the chance.
Hi, Doc. What you got? Your victim's COD probably won't surprise you. Acute myocardial infarction caused by intravenous ingestion of benzoyl methyleconine and morphine. Based on liver temp, I'd say her time of death is somewhere between 8 and 10 this evening. I did recover some skin cells from under her nails. Here they are. The pattern of the bruising is very suggestive of a 4 plus 1 on both arms. Fingers on one side, thumb on the other. Someone held your victim hard enough to leave an impression. I'd say very close to the time of her death. Tox indicates high levels of benzoyl methyleconine, but you know it better as cocaine. There are also toxic levels of morphine. This particular drug combo you might also know better as a speedball. Inflammation of the tissue inside the nasal cavities is definitely consistent with recent habitual use, and dare I say, abuse of cocaine. So Jessica Marnier may have been looking to kick her high up a notch. Yeah, because it's all fun and games until your heart stops. Yes, it is. You know, this may be nothing, but your victim's medical records indicate that she was right-hand dominant. So you'd expect to find any injection points along her left arm, not her right. But maybe she was just desperate for a good vein. Obviously, I can't say anything with absolute certainty. But what I can say is the bruising and the injection site are not inconsistent with the passenger inside the vehicle around the time of your victim's overdose. That passenger may be Manuel Molina's. We need to talk to him as soon as possible. You're also going to need Jessica Marnier's DNA and prints. Hey, I just thought you should know. Something strange has come up with Agent Huntby. No one can find him. It's been 48 hours, so the feds are asking me to put on a bolo for him. I don't know what's going on, but it's not good. I'll let you know if I hear anything else. Also, we didn't have any luck finding Manuel Molina's at his home address. Got a bolo out on him, too. Impounds delivered Jessica Marnier's car to the garage. I want you to process it very carefully. I also want us to go back to the car wash and make sure we didn't miss anything. Now that the vehicle's gone, we can process the rest of the car wash. Let's take a better look at those brushes. Jessica Marnier's fingerprints may be on the syringe, but it doesn't completely explain why she may have injected herself in the right arm when she was right-handed.
Red fiber. The employees here wear red jumpsuits. I'll see if I can get a sample for comparison. That's the cup Veronica Carver was drinking out of. And it was lying there in plain sight. So, we don't need a warrant to collect a sample of her DNA. Got that sample from the red jumpsuits the employees wear at the car wash. Fibers don't match. You know, the owner told me he just replaced all the brushes in the car wash, so anything on them that isn't from an employee is probably something that was deposited there very recently. Looks as though Jessie Marnay used this syringe to inject herself with a lethal cocktail of cocaine and morphine.
how did Veronica Carver's DNA end up under Jessica's fingernails? It's probative, but not enough to get a search warrant. We need to dig deeper. The owner of the car wash has kindly provided us with their surveillance footage. There was only one camera, but it might have picked up something useful. Looks like there's some residue on it. Better get it analyzed. That little tear could have been caused by any number of things. See if you can narrow it down a little. That isn't what you want. That won't help you. That isn't what you want. That might give us a clue as to what exactly made that tear.
benzoyl methyl echinine. Cocaine. Benzoyl methylacanine and morphine, the speedball cocktail. But what's it doing in the tear on the headrest? Let's pay Doc Robbins a call down in the morgue. Guillermo Rice. Veronica said they just call him Will, and he's Jessica Marnier's boyfriend. Looks like he's also familiar with narcotics. Mostly misdemeanor possession charges, no convictions. Bags full of pure cocaine, and Jessica's boyfriend's prints on it. According to the timestamp on the surveillance footage, Jessica Marnier drives into the car wash at 9 p.m. Now, Robbins puts her time of death at somewhere between 8 p.m. and 10 p.m., so we're closer to pinpointing her exact TOD. Wait, what's that? Jessica appears to be wearing both earrings when she pulls into the car wash. And look, the GPS is in its holder, so it definitely got knocked out while Jessica was inside the car wash. Hi, Doc. Got some more questions for you about the overdose case. You've learned something new? There was residue of benzoyl methyl echinine and morphine in and around a tear in the driver's headrest of our victim's car. Interesting. It certainly suggests that the needle used to inject Ms. Marnier came from behind her. Well, if there had been a struggle, then I'd say it's very possible the syringe needle may have gotten caught in the fabric of the headrest. I'm just about to review my autopsy notes and re-examine the body. I'll let you know if I find anything else. Let's hear what Will Rice has to say. We need a warrant, and Jim's our go-to guy. What evidence do you have? All right, so you have Will Rice's prints in the car and on a used plastic bag of cocaine, which was also part of the cocktail that killed Jessica Marnier. Nice work. I'll get you your warrant. Good evening, Mr. Rice. Thank you for coming in to talk to us. Yeah, well, it's not like I had a choice. No, you're right. 
Courtesy has a way of getting trampled under the momentum of a homicide investigation. Homicide investigation? I thought Jessie died of an overdose. So you knew she was a drug addict? She wasn't a drug addict, but yes, I knew she took drugs sometimes. Mr. Rice, before we discuss your relationship with Jessica, we'd like to learn a little bit more about you. Records we have indicate you dropped out of college not long ago. I did. I felt I was pretty much spinning my wheels in school, so I chose to get out into the real world. School of hard knocks, right? Not if your parents are paying all the bills for you. What is it that your mother and father do again? You leave them out of this. They're good people. They're hard-working people who took me in when I was a child and raised me as their own. Whatever this is all about, it has nothing to do with them. You understand? We were in love. We'd been dating almost a year, and we moved in together six months ago. So things were going well? Yes. Yes, they were. I wanted a future with her, but what's the saying? Man plans and God laughs? No one. The only thing I can think of... She only mentioned it once. She said she had a brother who was murdered. That's all she told me. She didn't want to talk about it. Do you think that might have had something to do with this? V and Jesse? Wouldn't call them close, but they got along okay most of the time. Um, V and I sort of dated back in high school, so I think she could sometimes be a little overprotective. I was at our apartment, asleep. Can anyone verify that? I don't know. Veronica, maybe? Like I said, I was asleep. Look, I know you think I did this to her, but I could never hurt Jessie. I loved her. She was everything to me. On a used bag of pure cocaine. Look, we party. We like to have fun. We've done some coke. Together. No, that's not my thing. I seriously doubt it, but... You know, like I said, there were some things that she didn't want to share with me. It's not like she tried to hide that from me. It was just something she said she needed. Like a ritual. This? I've had it for years, but it's actually become what I like to call our communal sweater. Probably anybody who's ever been to our place has worn it at one time or another. Jesse used to say it was like a house pet that we didn't have to walk or feed or clean. We're gonna need a sample of it. Well, Mr. Rice, at the very least, your print on the bag of cocaine is going to interest the district attorney. I'd say your continued cooperation with us might go a long way to convince him of your sincere desire to make amends. You can begin by providing us with your DNA, as well as permission to search your apartment. Again, how could I possibly say no? I finished re-examining the body, and I did find something important. A second injection site. It's situated high on the back of the victim's neck, concealed along the hairline. Based on the bruising around the wound, it would appear Ms. Marnier was injected in the back of the neck before she was injected in her right arm. A red sweater somehow found its way to the crime scene. We need to ask Will Rice what he knows about it. <laughs> 